much. I would like to f thank first uh, the organizers for this invitation, and um, uh, I think I'm just uh, at the very beginning need to um, kind of indicate that um, my paper will not uh, really tackle this issue from a digital perspective, um, but more from a prehistory of um, this kind of uh, digital perspective. And I'm um, uh, legitimizing my perspective or this approach um, by, um, with reference to John Eger's fine book that was already mentioned by Peter Flea in his introduction, a uh, government machine, um, uh, where John Eger proposes um, kind of a different take on the history of um, uh, public administration, uh, looking at um, uh, kind of files, um, systems of registries, indexes, um, workflow designs, um, as a kind of um, a prehistory of um, um, a kind of um, an information or an information technology uh, in its own right. This will be my kind of attempt to contribute to this discussion and um, uh, as it was already um, kind of indicated, uh, this is a case study. It does not, does not um, kind of um, try to provide an overview of this um, um, uh, of this uh, problematic, um, but tries to situate this um, within one uh, specific case. Um, and um, this specific case is um, uh, public, um, uh, public administration reform debates um, and practices, a kind of a reform process um, in Austria in the 1920s. The reason why I'm uh, so intrigued by Eger's perspective um, is on the one hand that it allows us to understand um, kind of public administration from a more kind of um, not more conventional institutional history perspective, um, but it allows us to understand it as a kind of an information technology. By, and it also allows us to look at um, uh, all that what we, what we know from um, the so-called historische Hilfswissenschaften, um, more derogatively called auxiliary sciences, um, uh, as uh, tools to um, kind of um, access uh, materials in the archives, um, uh, to locate files, um, to understand um, the way in which these files have been produced in order to um, kind of read them um, um, in a correct manner to understand these Hilfswissenschaften as an instrument um, for um, kind of a more cultural studies approach um, to public administration. Why Austrian um, uh, public um, uh, administration reform process as a case study? I think um, uh, public, um, um, the public administration reform is uh, one instance um, where the black box of um, routines, um, information flows, um, the design of information flows, decision making is being opened. Um, it's no longer considered to be a given, simply existing um, and um, uh, legitimated by its uh, very existence and tradition, but it's being uh, discussed, publicly discussed um, by a wide variety of actors. And, the 1920s um, in the Austrian case is particularly interesting because after the end of the monarchy, public administration reforms um, becomes a public issue. It has been uh, discussed already since the 1910s and they will also come back to this um, uh, pre kind of um, uh, precursor of this move of this um, uh, reform process. Um, but in the 1920s, um, a wide variety of actors is involved. The public, um, there, is, um, there are kind of uh, public announcements in newspapers, um, in different kind of media to contribute to this reform. And in this process, um, uh, also uh, kind of basically everything of this um, kind of, of the uh, administrative process is being questioned, commented, um, uh, critiqued, and um, for this reason, I think um, this reform process um, 
authors itself um, very well to um, a study of this kind. Let me begin with um, uh, the reform process. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's not very, um, um, very clear, but I think it probably reflects also, as the blurred image reflects a bit, um, the way in which um, this issue has been treated. Um, Ersparung ohne jeden Verzug, um, saving without delay, is a red stamp um, that has been um, kind of put on every file that has been, that left the office of the so-called um, Commissioner of Saving that the Austrian government appointed um, in the early 1920s. Um, it's quite obvious, you know, a Commissioner of Saving is necessary if uh, the government has serious um, problems um, uh, coming to terms with its budget. Um, uh, it might be um, already known to you, but um, Austria in the early 1920s was probably that what Greece is today in Europe. Um, it was at the brink of bankruptcy and it had to be bailed out um, by a massive loan of um, um, kind of from the international financial market um, guaranteed um, by the League of guaranteed by several states kind of under the umbrella of the League of Nations. Um, and the League of Nations uh, put uh, conditions uh, to its guarantee, and one of the conditions was um, uh, to cut expenses um, in, the pub in the public administration. And this was already before the League of Nations entered with kind of put this um, claim. The Austrian government was very well aware that this is um, a kind of, this is imminent, this is important. And one of the reasons for this was, um, as um, Josef Redlich, a very kind of famous um, um, former member of uh, parliament during the time of monarchy, member of the Administrative Reform Commission, an expert in public law and um, an intellectual in his own right, um, he commented on this uh, saying that um, the time of war actually completely uh, made vanish the traditional restraint that Austrian civil servants had um, on spending public money. With the war, this was completely gone. Money didn't count. Um, if you had projects, if you wanted to spend, there was always money generated um, uh, to, um, uh, to be invested. And so this was one of the reasons. Um, uh, other reasons were the bad economy, um, uh, the galloping inflation, which brought um, the state um, uh, close to bankruptcy. Now, saving money is um, a kind of um, uh, is obvious um, uh, is an obvious strategy. If one thinks along these lines for a systematic reform of public administration, the question arises, um, you know, how to save, um, what strategies to pursue. And at the end, if one looks at these debates on um, kind of public administration reform in the 1920s, um, they can be um, kind of brought down to the question where actually and how originates um, a bureaucratic work. Where is bureaucratic work generated? Um, so, and how this is then the point to access um, in order to reduce work and reduce uh, expenses um, uh, in this process. And um, uh, among the many kind of strategies that have been uh, proposed, um, I would like um, to um, uh, present you two. The one of them was. Um, the kind of the dominant hegemonic um, reading of this um, uh, answer to this question, and the second one, um, the one that is um, big, was um, unfortunately less dominant, but closer to the topic of this um, uh, presentation. Now, um, this public reform uh, process, um, as I already said, generated a lot of proposals, comments, voices uh, involved in this polyphony of um, different uh, perspectives. Um, and it also generated a lot of infight, a lot of intrigue behind the scene. Um, and there were actually two main actors that um, kind of emerged here. One 
uh, someone called Egbert Mandlicher. He was a very gifted kind of political figure. He was also a very gifted um, uh, drafter of laws already during the time of the war. And he became the upper hand in this process. Um, uh, and the second person was um, the Commissioner of Savings. Um, he was um, uh, a key figure in the Ministry of Finance, um, and he was the one who tried to push modern technologies um, uh, to be used in this process, like um, uh, the concept of normal work in order to assess um, the kind of uh, performance of different uh, agencies um, uh, within the state government and um, on that basis um, to limit uh, and or kind of to distribute more evenly and more equally uh, the positions that, um, that, were, that, uh, that um, are required um, to come to terms with the work to be performed. One has to keep in mind that the final, the ultimate goal of this uh, reform process was to cut 30% of all positions in state government, um, which they actually finally did. So the question is, where, how do you get um, a reduction of 30% of personnel, but also of uh, uh, a significant, a kind of an almost equal uh, uh, reduction in, ter in terms of um, uh, government work? The kind of Hornig, um, the Commission of Saving, had his uh, position about with the, with the use of new technologies, um, Mandlich, um, as a um, legislator, had a different reading of this um, uh, process, of this, um, of this challenge. And um, his reading um, was actually um, not um, completely wrong. Um, his um, argument was that um, Government work actually is, originates basically in legislation. Without legislation, there is no government work and legislation. Defines the tasks to be, to be performed and ultimately also the way in which uh, these tasks are being performed. So his point was, um, if you want to um, uh, change um, uh, the government, we need to change the legal basis on which the government works. And this is um, uh, a perspective which is um, certainly not entirely new. It all, always was uh, in the back of the minds of people uh, doing um, uh, government reform in the late 1800s. Um, and early 1900s, um, but it was usually very difficult to come by because um, a substantial uh, legislative reform of um, the way in which government is operating usually requires a broad consensus, um, and this broad consensus um, involves all these people who have their stakes in traditional modes of operation, and so they usually try to resist this. Um, uh, they, uh, they try to resist the new scheme. In the 1920s, um, uh, what um, those people feature focusing on um, legislative reform had as an asset um, was uh, the League of Nations, because the League of Nations put enormous pressure on the government um, to push through fundamental uh, changes um, in the government, um, uh, in the uh, kind of organization of government, threatening to withhold um, uh, the uh, kind of the payment, the installments um, uh, of uh, the payments of the loan. Nothing unfamiliar from today's perspective, but this was um, an important pressure that um, uh, was instrumental to um, actually uh, push through a uh, rather innovative perspective, um, uh, namely the codification of um, administrative law. Austria was, in this sense, was kind of a forerunner in this respect. It was the first country who systematically codified administrative law and um, in addition to that, um, also uh, 
based all administrative procedures um, on this um, new codified law, which made um, administration more transparent. Uh, it made um, administration, administration more predictable and also cut, um, uh, to some extent, also helped local administration to come to terms uh, with an expanding business. But what it didn't do, it didn't cut costs. This was, um, uh, from this perspective, it was um, an, ob an obvious failure. And, um, and this failure was um, uh, very well remarked um, from um, uh, contemporaries. Um, and um, one of the critiques that contemporaries raised, um, like members of the former reform movement, um, was that um, this um, uh, reform process actually completely um, uh, overlooked um, the relevance of um, uh, office technologies, um, uh, the change, uh, the, the kind of the reform of um, information flows, workflows um, in the office. Um, because they argued that um, it's true that um, legislation is uh, is instrumental to define government tasks, but on the local level, in the office, uh, it does make a big difference um, how you structure information flows, how you structure your workflows, um, and there you have still within, on the same, within the same uh, legislative framework, you do have a, quite a variety uh, to um, play with, um, and um, uh, people like um, the former Stadthalter from, from uh, Lower Austria, Kilmansek, uh, Count Kilmansek, uh, they uh, tended to, or they, they referred to, um, um, uh, to examples in the um, uh, private sector. Now, it's, um, it's kind of a pity that um, uh, time is running so quickly, so that I need to jump here to these um, two points that I would like to make um, uh, with regard to information flows and um, uh, workflow management. Um, basically, what... Um, uh, let me see. What the problem was for the Austrian administration in terms of uh, office management was um, uh, a theoretically very pure and convincing concept, uh, namely they followed strictly the line of a bureaucratic organization. The head of unit um, was at the center of um, uh, all workflows, information flows. Um, uh, the head of unit, for example, uh, the head of the district administration had to read all the files um, and had all to sign all the decrees that, has the, that um, uh, were issued uh, by, the admin, by, by, the, by his office. And this was very um, instrumental for um, privileging him as a kind of the key figure in this uh, administrative process, but as, a, as one can say, as a central processing unit, um, this um, head of the, uh, of the office um, was completely overloaded by the expansion of government activities um, uh, in the late um, uh, 1800s. Um, here you can see um, the work, um, kind of, um, uh, the amount of work, the amount of dossiers um, uh, that an uh, average district office had to process um, uh, in um, uh, uh, in these decades, um, and with about 45,000 dossiers per year, this means that um, uh, this head of government, uh, this head of um, our office, um, had to personally process about 800 dossiers per week, um, more than 100 per day. And um, um, this made, um, uh, this made local administ this administration on this level uh, almost um, dysfunctional. They owned the, the, um, there, there were two, um, uh, there were two um, solutions proposed um, uh, and then finally also implemented in 1923. Uh, one solution was um, uh, 
to abandon this strict bureaucratic model and to go for a more collaborative model within, uh, the, this, within the district um, uh, administration, uh, creating um, uh, subheads with their own, um, uh, with their own um, authorities um, and um, to also reorganize information flows along these lines. This would mean that um, the office would no longer have um, a central registry of all incoming uh, business, um, but this would be spread also to other, um, to these divisions, and the divisions would have their own information, um, uh, kind of their own registration uh, and their own information control, uh, which would um, uh, also um, provide um, solutions for um, a second um, challenge that these administrations had to fulfill. Next to uh, these, registers, these registries and the um, uh, metadata that they used um, were important to keep track of files. So in order to identify those civil servants who had a kind of a long, a huge backlog of files and did not um, uh, uh, process them, but they also were important um, to um, broaden uh, the, in a sense, to broaden, two minutes, two minutes, okay. Um, since to broaden the processing capacities of um, civil servants, um, they were working with files. The files would represent, as we all know, kind of uh, one procedure. But in their decision making, they were required to consider not just this one file and this one procedure, but they were required to consider kind of similar procedures, um, previous procedures of the same kind. Um, and in that sense, um, they were expected um, to, to use a highly interlinked um, system of knowledge, which were represented theoretically and kind of potentially in the registries of this administration, but it was important to bring this up. And to bring this up required um, uh, a kind of a systematic work, the creation of metadata, but also uh, the handling of this uh, metadata in, an, um, uh, in a controllable way. And in the old time, with centralized registries, for example, the provincial administration of uh, Lower Austria had um, 83 voluminous uh, volumes um, of um, registries to be handled um, per year uh, for this task. Um, if one considers that um, several procedures need to be uh, also uh, looked uh, over a series of years, then one can imagine that this is simply kind of an uh, a, a task, a challenge that can't be handled any longer. So for this reason, uh, the, uh, this strictly legalistic or kind of the approach to change legislation um, uh, was um, important but not enough. Um, it was uh, complemented by this um, uh, office reform which did not use technologies uh, but tried to um, uh, reorganize um, Austrian public administration as an information technology, abandoning a theoretically perfect or kind of a theoretically convincing but practically flawed bureaucratic um, structure by um, uh, a different system which was based on practical experience and uh, increasingly also by kind of best practice models from German administration and um, the private sector. Thank you.